Well, today we do begin our Lenten season and with those three popular things, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, things that we like to do. We call those the, uh, the penitential practices of Lent. And yet also they've been referred to as um, you know, the tools or the manifestations of mortification, to mortify oneself. And it comes from the Latin for mortis, is death, and facio, to make. So we're supposed to make death, or in other words, bring something to an end. And what is it that we're supposed to bring to an end? Well, again, it's part and parcel of the things that lead to our own sinfulness. Those desires that come from the heart. And how do we begin to understand that? A way in which we can approach it is that to say that when did sin begin? Obviously, Adam and Eve in the fall. And, but there's something about the story from the third chapter of Genesis, the fall of Adam and Eve. There are three temptations that are present there. The first being that, you know, to eat the fruit of the tree. God knows you won't die. In fact, you will be just like God, knowing good and evil. And the idea is to say that you'll be just like God. That's pride. That's pride that is present there. And that we will be able to decide for ourselves what is good and what is evil. You know, and it's like that's the fullness of pride. It's manifested there. Well, Eve looks at it. The second thing was that it looked good. It looked good for food, something to satiate the appetites. And there's something about our appetites that sometimes get a hold of us. And our appetites kind of dictate what goes on in our lives. We don't deny ourselves any food. You know, we don't deny ourselves any drink. We take whatever we can get to physically to have comfort, and is referred to as lust of the flesh. But the third temptation that is present there, that it was a delight for the eye to see, to see and to have that spark for things and desire things that are beautiful and comforting, that give us, we think, joy, the lust of the eye. The three penitential practices or the three mortifications have to do with those three temptations that happen within our lives. We look at the whole business of pride. What is the solution for pride? Prayer. In essence, prayer is the idea of understanding ourselves as creatures before the Creator. God is God, I am not. God is the one who is the author of good. And with God, we've discovered the true good and the true evil. We don't dictate that. We don't determine that. We don't write that script. And the business of the idea of prayer is to be humble before God, who is creator. And we are mere creatures. The whole idea of the lust of the flesh, to deny ourselves fasting, that is to deny ourselves Things that are good, but you know, the thing is, if we overindulge, that appetite for food or drink or whatever controls our lives. We're not intended to be controlled by our worldly or fleshly desires, our wants. We're not intended to be controlled by them. We are to control those things. They don't control us. We are to control them. And so the whole idea of fasting, self-denial, which is not an easy thing, but we have to deny ourselves so that our physical appetites don't have the upper hand. In a certain sense, we have to put that to death. The delight of the eye, lust of the eyes, to look for things that are beautiful, pleasant, wonderful, okay, we acknowledge there are certain beautiful things in this world, but the danger is that we don't look at the ugly part of life, that we don't see poverty, we don't see hunger, we don't see suffering. We avert our eyes to those things. 
And so the whole idea of the business of almsgiving is to do whatever we can to help ease the burdens of others, to help those who are hungry, to help those who are sick, to help those who are deprived, who have experienced injustice. The whole idea of lust of the eye is that we're always going to go for the good things that we just absolutely want to have and enjoy and feel happy and peaceful with everything, but almsgiving forces us to think about those who are in need, and we don't necessarily look to those things first and foremost. We close our eyes to them. Penance, mortification, certain things have to be brought to an end. We put to death. And it's, mortification is a good word because it's never easy. It's not easy. It's not easy to deny oneself. It's not easy to look charitably for those who are in need. It's not easy for us to be humble before God in our prayer life. But those are the things that we have to do. Those are the three penitential practices that we focus upon during this Lenten season. Why so? So we can have hearts and minds that are open to the grace of God. Hearts and minds that are open to the transforming presence of God in our lives to draw us closer to him so that we're, in a certain sense, in a balance, that we're right with God, that we're right with one another. Human beings left to themselves with those three temptations, those have a way of destroying our lives, our souls. They have a way of destroying our relationships with one another. And they have a way of destroying our relationship with God. We have a means by which we can practice these three things that we wouldn't ordinarily do on our own. But they're placed upon us because they're for our own good. Our own good that we may continue to grow in God's goodness. And so we pray. We will now have uh, the blessing and the distribution of ashes. And ashes always remind us you know, that all things come to an end. Everything is ashes. It all comes to an end. And when everything comes to an end, what do we have? If we don't have a relationship with God, we've got nothing. We've got nothing but ashes. Ashes remind us also that as human beings that we have a bottom. We can't get any lower than ashes. But as a people of faith, we don't have a top. We can continue to grow in the goodness of God, the grace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. We can aspire to the highest of life, which is life eternal. That's what it's all about. Salvation, kingdom of God, the resurrection, new life that is promised to us. And we cooperate with that gra grace by doing our penance with minds and hearts open to that saving grace of our Heavenly Father.